Hello and welcome to session 10 of day two of the Pure International Conference. This session is on the future of Chris or Chris of the future. And um, I want to remind you about um, the Q&A, live Q&A button on the right-hand side of your screen and the time permitting, we'll cover questions um, at the end of the presentation. Um, today's presenter is Ellen Fest. She's um, a research impact librarian from the Netherlands and I will butcher the university's name, Wagengen University and Research. Um, in this role, she's involved in the strategic decisions about PURE, leading research analytic projects that analyze the impact of the um, research at the university and setting up services for researchers to support their needs for evaluation purposes. Besides that, she is on top of the new technologies to support evaluations in a very changing academic environment. Um, Ellen? Welcome to the session and um, lead on. Thank you, Bonnie, for this introduction. And yes, it's a difficult uh, name of the university to pronounce for not Dutch speaking people. It's a Wageningen University and Research, a small town in the central part of the Netherlands. Um, but I'm here uh, on behalf of a working group we formed uh, doing a project about how the future of the Chris or the Chris of the future should look like. And uh, I want to thank uh, the organizing committee to give me the opportunity to share this project here. And of course, I'm very happy uh, if people can, well, discuss later on on how uh, they think, uh, well, the future of the Chris will be. And uh, to start with, this project started all with a video call I had with one of my colleagues in another Dutch university. And we were discussing uh, how to deal with preprints in Pure. And well, this brought us to the question, how should we deal with all these things that are changing in science? And we concluded with a, a very blunt statement. So if we stop counting, why would we need to have a Chris system? And this statement made us realize that we as a Chris community uh, needed to get in touch with our users and policy makers and try to understand what they will need in the future. In this way, we can prepare a future-proof Chris. In this presentation, I will explain the current situation in the Netherlands and the changes, changes in science, practice and evaluation. Then I will explain the goal of our project. And with the, with the project team, we are currently determining uh, our first thoughts on the future aspects and usage of the Chris systems. And I will conclude with our next steps. The context of this project are two major science policy transformations. The first is the national program on open science. And the other one is a program called recognition and rewards. And in the next slides, I will introduce these programs further. The transition to open science. In the National Programme on Open Science, the focus lies on open access publishing, fair data and citizen science. This programme stimulates these three aspects, but is also a driving force to create more awareness of open science aspects throughout the whole research process. In most universities, researchers have grouped together in open science communities to share best practices, learn from each other, and spread the fundamentals of open science. Furthermore, the Dutch National Funder also stimulates open science practices, for instance, to accept preprints on CVs of researchers and asking applicants for their research data management plans. In general, we think open science will result in a much broader range of research outputs and activities. The second major change is the recognition and rewards program by the Association of Universities in the Netherlands. In November 2019, this program started with the publication of the position paper Room for Everyone's Talent towards a new balance in the recognition and rewards for academics. This paper was published by the Association of Universities in the Netherlands, the Dutch Federation of University Medical Centers, the Royal National Academy of Arts and Sciences and two major funders, NWO and Zon MB. This position paper indicated how we aimed 
to more broadly recognize and reward the work of academic staff. This includes placing less emphasis on the number of publications and a greater emphasis on the other, on the other domains in which academics can be active, such as education and impact. This paper has led to a national working group and local working groups at the universities. They are discussing how to reshape the research assessment on local and national level. The position paper identifies five major things that we need to change. Diversifying and vitalizing career paths, enable a greater diversity in career paths, for instance, an education career path. Achieving balance between individuals and collective, not only assess a researcher on their individual achievements, but also recognize the role they have in a team. Focusing on quality, less emphasis on quantitative results and a greater emphasis on quality, content, scientific integrity, creativity, contribution to science, academia and society. Stimulating open science, as explained in the National Programme Open Science. And this will affect the diversity of research output. And stimulating academic leadership. Attention will be paid to good academic leaderships on all levels in the organization, like for instance, supervising doctoral students. We started this project with a group of colleagues from the Dutch Pure User Group, in combination with the Coordination Point Research Impact. The Coordination Point Research Impact is a working group from the Dutch United Libraries and consists of li library colleagues working on research support and research intelligence. We also try to involve universities that do not use PURE as a CRIS system because we want to, our results to be system independent. The central question in our project is, what, ro what role will or can the CRIS have in an academic world without counting and with a huge diversity of research outputs? At the moment, we are working on a document with which we can start a discussion with these local recognition and reward working groups. We didn't want to ask the open question to them. What do you need from us? Expecting to receive an answer, we don't know. For that reason, we are compiling the discussion sheets with examples and questions to start the conversation and show the potential of CRIS systems and, uh, and what, they, what role CRIS systems can have in this changing, changing academic environment. For today's presentation, I took out some first thoughts. As a result of open science, we foresee a broader range of research outputs that needed to be registered. These transitions also put emphasis on disseminate scientific knowledge to broader communities. For that reason, we think activities of researchers might become more important. The CVs will transform into narratives and how can the CRIS system support that? More insight and links between entities might be relevant in order to create these narratives. We need to deal with the variation of roles within teams and also reporting on thematic level will become more important for evaluation purposes. Open science will lead to a more diverse ballet of research output. We are now already seeing a rise in preprint and CRIS managers are struggling how to register them and link them to the final publication. These two graphs show the growth of number of preprints. I plotted the number of preprints on archive and bioarchive, and I found uh, a graph from the COVID preprints and how they grew between January and November in 2020. Another example of new research outputs are the open educational resources. Many universities are stimulating teaching staff to share their educational material. In my university, we have developed a database with educational material called the Library for Learning. In this database, 
we harvest various sources like education, like our education video platform. At the moment, the educational material is not registered in ACRIS. If we want to diversify the career path and make a career path in education, open educational resources will become relevant to register and with the ultimate goal to link them to courses and study programs as well. Some weeks ago, a researcher asked, asked me to how to register a podcast in Pure. And I had to conclude that there is no type of output or press media specifically for podcasts. With a huge amount of scientific podcasts, this is already a mature type of media outlet that researchers support to communicate their knowledge to professionals and to the general public. Besides communicating knowledge via media, activities will also become more important. If you want that, if you want that pure or other CRIS systems will be used to register activities, we need to make it easier and faster to register them. As an example, here you see several examples that uh, are in our quiz system, are in our pure, and they all have the category other activities. So people were struggling uh, in which box they had to place them. And the first two are videos. They should either be a research output or in press media. Membership is a type, is a, is a type within activities. And the latter one, publishing an open letter as a contributor is a research output. And these examples emphasize that people are struggling with registering activities. As activities will become more important, it might be helpful if we can pre-populate pre the CRIS systems with data that is available in the scholarly, in the scholarly publishing community. Journals and publishers know who are the editors. Conference organizers know who is speaking at their conferences. Why not link them via their ORCID, for instance, uh, to the researchers and harvest them in the CRIS systems? I think this point will also be discussed in a panel discussion later today about the benefits of integrating data into or out of PURE. Why do we need to enter the information that is already available elsewhere? And perhaps we need to think of more types of activities. At this moment, I cannot oversee it. But the example of one of our researchers made me think how to deal with this one. She had a role in a mixed learning environment. Okay, is that a course or a workshop? And the participants were researchers, professionals, students, and the general public. Okay, which audience is the target in this? More organizations and funders are switching to narrative CVs. They focus on short paragraphs, on short paragraphs and no extensive lists of publications. The example here is from the Royal Society and called the Resume for Researchers. The narrative is built on four modules. How can we make it easy to select publications or activities from the press system and include them in the narratives? If we as a KISS community want to support researchers, we should make this connection to, um, to make sure that people will not maintain their own CVs in Word documents and elsewhere. And important is to support open standards in this process. This is explained in a recent publication by Strinzel and co-authors indicating 10 ways to improve academic CVs for a fairer research assessment. Furthermore, we think that linking between entities will become more important. As a result of opening the whole research cycle, the connection between these individual outputs is necessary to understand the process and to tell the story of your research. Funders want to know what happens with their money. Not only the research data is linked to a publication, but also the code that is used for the analysis is shared and linked to data and publication. 
Also, the connection between a publication and a newspaper article is of interest to follow the flow of knowledge to the society. The Recognition and Rewards program describes the role within teams, and these can be on various levels. If we want to support this, we need to identify these roles in the CRIS system. Can we use open standards here as well? Like, for instance, the credit taxonomy? Do we need more roles than currently available? Especially thinking in relation to the diversification of career paths. Points of attention are the dynamic of teams. What defines a team? And how to maintain that in a system? Can we use visualizations to support the position of researchers in teams? Like, for instance, is already done in the Pure Portal. What we also see is the need for a more dynamic way of, of dynamic way of reporting instead of reporting on organizational level. Organization work more and more in a thematic way. For instance, my organization defines several research programs and investment programs. On a lower level, again, other strategic teams are defined and researchers from various organizational units are working on these themes together. It is impossible to label all the output manually to these programs and teams. We need more automatic labeling like is done, for instance, for the SDGs. And in that way, we can maybe uh, support the thematic reporting. Well, this was a brief overview of our first thoughts on how CRIS systems can support the transition in science. How do we continue? The first step is to get in touch with local and national working groups on recognition and rewards. We want to demonstrate the potential of PURE and other CRIS systems for open science and recognition and rewards. And we also hope to hear what they need from us. Then we can collect improvements and wishes of the current systems. And at the end of the project, we also report back to our library directors what is needed for a future-proof CRIS support. And with this, I would like to end my presentation. Special thanks to all the group members. And for those who would like to talk to me about this project, feel free to connect with me. I will be available at the booth of the Dutch Pure User Group between 6 and 6.30. And otherwise, you can always send me an email. Thank you very much. Wow, Ellen, that was fantastic. They, um, it was very interesting. You, um, what a great user group. I mean, I, you know, I don't speak Dutch, but I peek into that user group once in a while because you guys just have such a great group and your issues that you're looking at are, you know, fantastic and international global. Um, so I saw you had mentioned the recognition of reward program and I saw that yesterday in another presentation as well. Um, and then the session before yours on open science, which we're now going to try and say like open research or open knowledge so that the humanities people don't get um, offended. The how do you think the uptake on that will be like like how do you think the universe you get the universities and that to sort of shift um, into looking at it in a broader mode? I mean, it's hard when you can't just count numbers. So um, so how do you think that that's going to kind of be adopted or work? Uh, I think it's a, a pretty difficult process. Uh, you see these working groups are already uh, one year uh, working on the team. And yeah, it's difficult to agree on how to evaluate research. And I think these go hand in hand. If we move a bit with the evaluation practices, we can also stimulate the other practices as well. And then things will move forward. and. The next step is that the funder also makes some new changes and slowly pushes uh, yeah, science into, yeah, into a new format. Uh, but I think it's, it, these are all small steps. We cannot totally shift it at once. Um, but yeah. well, I see, I see, I think we as a Chris community should yeah, be aware that we, we keep up with this process to, well, yeah, not be uh, put ourselves at, at the side and, and not be used anymore. So, and uh, there's a lot of valuable information in our systems which we have collected for many, many years, and it 
it's, uh, it would be very shame if we if we lose that. So. Right. Well, one of your um, set description sentence of the session was about like the role of of the library and the Chris systems in the institution. And I, th I think, as you were saying, um, librarians, real uh, libraries have to really promote what they already have to sort of move this process forward. But it's difficult because generally libraries are more supportive and behind the scenes, you know, and not front and center, which I think in this, you know, evolving landscape, they really are have to be if they want it to work because we know how to organize and make things work. And so to be out in front to do it. Um, the other thing you mentioned was about diversity of activities. And again, you know, when you move away from, you know, numbers, if you're counting publications, that's one thing. But when you look at all the activities that make up, you know, knowledge and, you know, and the knowledge landscape, it really is a lot. Um, I'll just hide myself from pure here. I customize all my stuff. So I've, I've in research output, I've made a section for podcasts and webinars because like you said, they really are becoming a huge thing. We had a um, publication come in the other day that was a, a web publication. So it was like this interactive multimedia book. And I was like, where do I put that? So um, yeah, you're right. It's it's a real challenge. So um, we just, let's see if, see if anybody else has questions besides me um, chatting on. Um, let's see. Go ahead. Okay. So there's one um, here that just came in from Nicola. Um, how do you anticipate communicating your results to system vendors to make sure that you, um, the, your solution can be implemented in a system um, in a response? like pure that's responsive and flexible. And historically, um, the timeline for implementing is quite long and focus on those areas can be hard to maintain. Yeah, well, I think if, if uh, we first start discussing this with, with um, these recognition and rewards group, then the next step, of course, is also get back to uh, the system vendors uh, and not only pure, but there are also, are also a little bit more uh, systems uh, used in the Netherlands. Uh, and and yeah, I think start early talking to them mm -hmm. to already. Of course, they also have ideas about that, but I think it's good to share our results, of course, with the vendors. That was one of the ideas as well. Yeah. So to have a list for them as well. Yeah. <laughs> a, li a list for everybody, a list for the, the country, a list for the librarians, a list, no. for the a list for the researchers. Everybody, like you said, they're all small steps and everybody has to you know do their part to to move it forward, which is really, really important. Yeah, but, um, so it's, I yeah. think we, should, we we can identify where the major problem is. So do we have to put emphasis on pre-population or do we have to put emphasis in networks or uh, where should we put the, the effort on? I think that also can be helpful for vendors. Right, yeah, declare, yeah. Well, when you clarify what you need and what you, what you need, it's so hard, right, when you're, figuring out what to go in is different than figuring out what has to come out, right? And so, um, so how, to, how to organize the data going in and, and get it out. And then um, same thing, like you said about roles. I mean, that's part of the diversity of activities is the diversity of roles that people play. And um, how do you move away from that, you know, lead author, you know, gets all the glory. And um, because everything is so collaborative now that you wanna make sure that everybody um, shares. So. Um, just got a nice comment from um, Mir. Very good presentation. Congrats. So, yeah, it, it was really very, very thoughtful. So we appreciate that. I think we just have, I've got my little thing rolled up here. So we just have a minute left. If anybody else has any questions, please pop them into the live Q&A chat so that we can make sure we cover them. And as Ellen said, she'll be in the Dutch um, user group um, expo room which are really great to go and see. Which time did you say you'll be uh, over there? At, uh, 6 to 6.30. At the end of the day, I will be there. At the end of the day. Okay. I guess we'll be in conference all day. Conference until day. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So if you do have questions, please, you can follow up. And as I said, it's a really great um, user group. And I peek in there when I can. Um, Christopher is, um, says, wonderful presentation, and then has a question. Do you find the new reporting module is helping um, with some of these changes, or have you not... Have you delved into that yet? I have to admit that it's difficult to start with because I'm so used to the old one and I'm not the one who is working all, all days with Pure. So I'm, I'm more overseeing everything and doing more with Cyval and Scopus than with Pure. Um, but uh, I have to, to do that. So 
sorry, I cannot uh, give a good answer to that. <laughs> well, as you said, it's in talking to the vendors, right? So if they can help the output fit more the need that we, you know, want, then that'll help. Um, Jan has a question. Um, she says that um, they bring in journal articles because they're easy. Like you said, there's so much integration there already. And there is a session later today about integrating in and out. Um, but how do we get the other potential content providers on board? So you're right. It's it's the conference, you know, providers and editorial boards and things like that. Yeah, I, th I think that that's uh, yeah, maybe uh, at the moment very difficult, but uh, all, there's already a list on the internet with uh, uh, editors, it's web scraped, but it is there. And I think if I understood it correctly yesterday from the roadmap, that Pure is going to make it easier to pre-populate uh, uh, the, the system with uh, information. So mm -hmm. I hope that can help and we can yeah, collaborate mm -hmm. on uh, importing other activities together. Yeah. I know Clarivate has a peer reviewer module as part of their um, author. Publance. Yeah. Yeah, Publance. Yeah. So, you know, so it, they're getting it, but um, we just need to get them to share it. So um, yeah. that's good. So I think we've reached the end of the session. Um, thank you so very much. It was really great um, thought provoking topic and some good little benchmarks as to sort of how to move the process forward a little bit. And I really appreciate it. Um, so I think we now have a quick five minute break before we move into navigating the complexities of open access. So this is an open access day, it looks like. Um, it's gonna be a case study from the University of Copenhagen, which I can actually say the word, in collaboration with Kronos Hub, which I believe is an open access publishing enabler. So um, I peeked into that one yesterday a little bit too. So um, if you'll take a quick break and we will see you back here in five minutes. Thank you. <laughs>